a Royal Dutch Gazelle means that we are a company that, um, well, in Holland, basically, they have this royal title for all these different companies. And within every industry, you have one company that could have, let's say, the royal title. And you have to live up to a lot of different standards in order to do so. And you've got to be at least 100 years old as well to do that. And um, that happens to be Gazelle. We've been around for 125 years. We have a factory in Holland. And we assemble and design and do everything from Holland as well. And those are parts of, let's say, um, the prerequisites in order to have the royal title. So the royal family, of course, writes Gazelle too. Oh, they do? Yeah, of course. Oh, duh. Oh. Um, uh, what, what other types of companies, like, name a couple of other royal Dutch companies. Um, um, royal Dutch companies. Like, is a royal a Dutch shell. Royal I'm, Dutch shell? Yeah, it's like a little gas? bit... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Boo! Uh, Can we all do that together? <laughs> Boo! Hey, what, Royal, one second. I'm like, going to interrupt us really quick because we've got these speakers. I know there are lots of people out there who have test ridden and loved gazelles today because all of our demo bikes have sold, basically. So I know there's a lot of excitement. So gather around because there's so yeah, much join good the gazelle information. Family. Yeah, don't be, yeah, don't be shy. Join the gazelle family. Join the Gazelle family. Yeah, get some food and come sit down. That's yeah, the... those two just ordered a uh, yeah, Gazelle and Yeah, we've got a pink a, Gazelle and A pink, a pink right one, here. Rose. Yeah, Rose. Anyways, but I interrupted you. Shell, okay, that's an example. Yeah, What's another um, example? Like, uh, there's a lot of, let's say, for example, bake, like there's a royal bakery that always makes like food and stuff for the, the royal family. Okay. And they're like super... Have you gone there? Uh, it happens to be in The Hague, where, okay. let's say, the royal family lives as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, some other companies, that I can't really think of it right away. I think it's Philips, which is a royal company, too. Huh. Um, um, Interesting. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. There we go. Thank you for answering that question. Um, so, Gazelle, this is Gazelle's kind of first full year as an individual company. I mean, we've been selling Gazelle now for a couple years. Yeah. Gazelle has been here with uh, different kind of incarnations of, of bikes. Tell me what's going on with Gazelle in the United States, why you guys are here, what makes you excited. Yeah, That's so in um, oh, we've been doing some sales with you guys through sister brands um, that helped us sell Gazelles. Uh, but since last year, basically, since January or February of last year, we set up an office in Santa Cruz, uh, right next to our colleagues, uh, Santa Cruz Bicycles, which is a mountain bike brand. And uh, the reason why we did that is because uh, we really like to kind of spread the love for bikes globally, and the U.S. is one of the markets that we really want to focus on. And so we thought it was best to kind of do that through our own company so it's a gazelle office with gazelle employees so we hired about seven people so far and we have independent sales reps throughout the country that represent gazelle uh, but also it's in the end just to be able to kind of service our retailers and our customer in the end uh, most effectively so we just had a, a conversation about infrastructure and kind of some of the challenges um, for bicycles in America tell me from, from a Dutch perspective, what is interesting about uh, the American market? Uh, it's super scattered around, first of all. Like, uh, San Francisco has different markets, I would say. Um, San Jose, Santa Cruz, Portland, everything is very different from an infrastructural perspective. But also for like the type of people that live in those different places, they might be looking for different things as well. Um, I was born and raised in Holland, and I would sit on like the passenger seat with my mom, and I would say, hey mom, watch out, there's a bike in your blind spot right now. That's how you're being raised, basically. So you're, you're used to having bikes around your car all the time. Um, and it, we have also a right of way, so a, a pedestrian is like, you know, you can cross the road whenever they want, then it's the cyclist, and then it's the car. So whenever you hit a bike, uh, or a, a, uh, a pedestrian, the car, the, the automotive, like someone who's driving the car, is always wrong. Until you can prove the opposite. 
So that is like giving uh, a cyclist so much protection and so much right of way that um, you feel safe. And I think that is something that here in the US is not very embedded in it yet. I, I bike to work. I wor uh, live in Seabright. I work on the end of Mission in Santa Cruz. It's about like a six mile ride home. And I don't really feel safe all the time in Santa Cruz. Uh, whereas I, you know, I've been biking my whole life. So I understand, let's say, and that has everything to do with, let's say, the people texting in their cars, the cars being bigger, and there are no um, real infrastructure sometimes. Or the infrastructure is there, but it just stops at some point. And, uh, you know, that's something we have to, like, overcome with each other. Um, but the bikes that we make, I think, are still pretty good for some riders here in the U.S., because you're having a very upright seating position. And in that upright seating position, you can see around you a lot better than when you're like leaning for over. Your blind spot is simply much bigger if you're sitting for up, like, you know, more like over. Whereas if you're sitting upright, it's just much more comfortable. You don't have all that much pain in your wrists. It's comfortably, and you can see what happens around you. Yeah, I mean, I. The, the thing that struck me the first time I rode a gazelle, and still strikes me when I ride them, is they are so comfortable in a way that makes you feel very... It makes you feel elegant, I think, in a certain type of way. I, I, I describe it as a kind of metropolitan feeling. But I wonder, from like an insider's perspective, what is it about the design of those bikes? Other than just, oh, it's an upright bike, because there are lots of upright bikes, yeah. um, that really sets Gazelle apart from a design perspective. Well, we're a bike company, and of course we're into e-bikes right now, uh, but um, we still believe that the bikes should feel like you're biking on a bike instead of a moped or something. You, um, so if you, for example, ride the Arroyo, it still very much feels like riding a bike. You don't have to control it. Um, it's, uh, it's just an easy kind of way to get around in town. And the other site, it's a super utilitarian bike brand, I would say. Uh, people, and that's because of the root of the brand. Uh, bikes are used for everything. In Amsterdam, Utrecht, whatever city. Uh, you know, I was, I think, six or five or something when I rode to school by myself. And my mom was like, here is your bike, go to school. And sometimes I did, and sometimes I didn't go to school. <laughs> well, I went to school long enough to, to be here. But, um, no, I think it's super utilitarian and, um, and still, like, super easy to ride. So you don't have to control. They're not very aggressive bikes either. Yeah. Of course, we have, like, the Citizen Speed, which is, like, a 28 miles per hour bike. It's, like, brings you for me to be a little faster than the Arroyo. And uh, it's more like an American-style bike, I would say but all the other bikes are super utilitarian, super comfort. So I understand that actually in Holland, speed bikes are becoming really popular. They're building like speed bike specific pathways. Yeah, there's a um, whole new problem there. Maybe you can tell there. me about what's going on there with speed bikes and why they're popular in Holland, and then a little bit more about the citizen. Yeah, so the, uh, the, uh, there's, a, there's so many people on bike paths right now in Holland uh, that uh, it's getting a little crowded, but you know, on a highway, we so also... have bicycle traffic? We have bicycle traffic, yeah, oh, definitely. God. There's God a lot of bicycle traffic. <laughs> Especially uh, because I used to live at the Amstel, like in Amsterdam. And um, a lot of people actually go over this one main street where uh, bikes have the way, like the, the right of way. So there are no cars allowed. And um, go at, like walk in, like crossing that at like around like 8, 8.15, it's just no not possible basically because people come in from with the train and they have their bike and ride into Amsterdam it's just it's a mess anyways but the same way as we have on our on our highways we say you know the maximum speed level is 65 miles an hour um, right now with e-bikes you have of course all these different like speed levels so um, you gotta have to start controlling that so you either have to have different lanes for different speeds um, and we decided in Holland that we actually ban speed pedal legs off, let's say, the normal uh, bike pass, uh -huh. and they have to enter like the normal uh, 
roads. Uh, because they're going 45 kilometers an hour, which is 28 miles per hour, um, and they have to have a license plate, and there's a specific helmet that is needed for that bike. So we started kind of regulating that, because the reason it's it's picking up so fast is like a lot of companies are providing those bikes to to their employees. Um, so what we like, we happen to be like in the car business as well a little bit in uh, in Holland with the the, the mother company and. Um, um, what we see a lot of companies do these days is that they provide, let's say, 50 cars and 30 bikes. And they just let people like timeshare those different, let's say, products. And uh, so you can decide to go home on your bike or you can go home in a car. And so they uh, have their garages and um, they have cars and bikes there. And a, a bike that goes 45 kilometers an hour, 28 miles per hour, is just super nice to come and go to work with. Unless it rains, then everyone is in their cars, of course. <laughs> well, sometimes. Well, all our bikes are, you know, with fenders, and, and is, we're used to rain, so our bikes are kind of, you know, protected for the rain. But, uh, yeah, we see bikes picking up, like, speed pedal legs really picking up, especially because of people like living a little outside of the city centers. So in like the suburbs of Amsterdam, we see that in, in Holland happening as well, that you know, Utrecht, The Hague, Amsterdam are like bigger cities and the real estate price like goes skyrocket. So more and more people live a little outside of the cities, but we have the infrastructure to kind of bike in really rapidly. And then a speed pedal like really makes sense. So. Holland is flat. Yeah, well, we have Why winds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of winds. The problem's wind. Yeah, the, the, the problem is wind, and that's why e-bikes are big. So, um, in Holland right now, like, one on every three bikes are e-bikes. The, the sales of over there bikes? of new bikes. Wow. Um, so, and with Gazelle, we are about the same. We sell about 100,000 e-bikes this, this year. Whereas we have a total of 275,000, so we actually are passing by that. Yeah, better. yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um, does anybody have any questions? Would you like to ask anything of no. Avon? Nothing. I just wanted to open that up. That is an opportunity. That it is a possibility. So just like wave your hand. Wave your just, hand. Yeah. Or come sit next out. to us. We have. Phoebe. We have, a, we have a mix, let's say, uh, 100,000 is not only in Holland, it's actually in Germany, France, uh, Belgium, Denmark, and the UK. And then we sell about, let's say, uh, three to 4,000 here in the US. Okay. We've got a ways to go, people. We have a this ways to go. This is just the first super bicycle. The next super bicycle will be bigger, and then bigger, and then bigger. Because the potential is there to get people out of cars. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, we, that's, that's true. You know, it's like, and I think there's a huge potential because we just actually started over here. Um, but if you look at, let's say, the data, um, the, the data basically says that there are about 250 to 300,000 e-bike sales happening here in the U.S. And then I'm talking about, let's say, quality e-bikes, basically the bikes that are represented here too. Uh, it, there's there's a there's a ton of bikes that are being sold that say at a, a about like a thousand dollar kind of price point in the wall Walmart and all those kind of shops. We don't really compare ourselves to let's say that kind of industry because we we believe that we're selling a better product with more with more service and a, a longer lifetime. But a market that is two hundred fifty thousand is not a very big market for a country that is this big. Um, but I, I see a lot of potential. Um, Which is why you're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> I mean, I a lot of people actually asked us, like, you know, where, how do you compare, let's say, the U.S. market to, uh, to the European market? And I think there's so many things that you, uh, that you can compare, let's say, the European market 10 years ago with the market that it is today here. Because e-bikes at first in Holland or in, in Europe was just like, you know, for older people or something, or, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're your cheater or something. And you hear that sometimes over here too, but it's, it's, not, it's not that. It's just, you know, it, it, may, it extends your range. 
brings you from A to B a lot faster. It's fun. Um, there's just so much, let's say, positive stuff around an e-bike. And if you still want to like be on your pedal bike, you know, go for it. You know, do your workout in the hills on your on your normal pedal bike. But uh, coming to the office without sweat, it's quite nice. Or yes, going to your exactly going to your coffee place without sweat is pretty nice too. <laughs> Yeah, so all our bikes are manufactured in Holland in our factory and uh, we have four production lines and those production lines is like basically there's a hook, like uh, there's a hook and you 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 build a bike upside down so, by humans by humans yeah by 100%. humans 100 percent by humans yeah the, the reason no automation barely any automation the, the automation that happens is putting spokes into the hubs and then um, yeah, a a, robot sort of. yeah that's some sort of a robot it's like you need like 36 spokes for a, for a hub for example and then there's still a human actually putting like say the, the tension on the spokes and then there's another human putting the tension on the spokes again here the new wheel. yeah so I mean <laughs> robots this is why we're a little bit unsure about robots I mean, they're okay, but it's going to be a while. It's gonna be no, I don't like They've yeah, got some catching up to it's do. Quantities, like it's quantities. Humans are yeah. awesome. Yeah, humans this is are like, awesome. This is what's interesting, actually, about I think it's such a, it's such a fascinating a question. question. Like, one of the things that is so um, interesting about the bicycle industry, whether you go to Asia and you see what, how they're building bikes there, or uh, you go to Gazelle's factory, or you go to Reese and Miller's factory, whoever. People are by building these bikes. Like this is people scale from the building of the bike all the way up through the the, the use of the of the product. Um, and it's very it's human scale. It's it, it's efficient. It's got a lot of really important technology on board. And then it's got a lot of really key places where it it's not unbelievably high tech it is it's it's rooted in a history of manufacturing um, and I think it's a really exciting kind of juncture between the two because in in some places I mean robots are, are really interesting but you see places like at Tesla where they're totally spending too much money on their robots and we've got like people who need jobs <laughs> we've got all sorts of yeah, you, can, you, can, you can even compare, let's say, the bike business to car business 50, 60 years ago. A lot more of the car business. But first of all, there were a lot more brands uh, out there at the time, uh, 60 years ago, than there are right now. It's kind of, you know, consolidated. Right now in the bike business, there are tons of brands. And it's very easy. There's a low barrier to entry, the bike business. But, um, and because the production batches are actually so small, it's very hard to actually automate that and make that efficient or that investment that you have to make in order to earn that back, there's no way. Um, but maybe over, yeah, maybe maybe over 50 years if you're sitting here again and you guys are still happy with the Gazelle Nell, uh, we can <laughs> talk that over again and see whether there's some more robotics in there. Um, we do see, for example, that Gazelle, for for example, sources their frame, like we are starting to source our frames from uh, from Portugal, um, and we do see that some of that, let's say, welding is hap starting to happen like automatically right now. So um, that it's it, just coming online, like in the next. It's just started, yeah, that's right? just kind of starting. Yeah, and uh, because um, because we manufacture in in Europe. Uh, having such a long wait time to get products from Asia, a lot of products actually come from Asia. There's actually a lot of products coming from Europe as well. About 30% of our bikes or 40% of our bikes come from Europe from a parts perspective. And then the rest comes from Asia. And now with the frame coming from Asia, uh, from Europe as well, uh, that is going to increase, let's say, uh, the total spent that we spent on our bikes really drastically, moving it from away from Asia to, to Europe. Reason, just lead time, go to market. Yeah. No, the frame.
games are right now produced in Asia. Yeah, right? exactly. So, so yeah, it, the, I don't know where the, it comes from actually. Will the aluminum be European when the frames are made in Portugal? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that answer. So I can't answer that. Say it again. Yeah, so yeah, it could be sourced from there. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it's a, it's a hot topic right now, right, in the U.S., where, where the aluminum firm comes from. Uh, uh, but I, I, can't, I can't, can't answer that question. I want to be sure if I answer something. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Gazelle as a brand only works together with Bosch and Shimano, which are, let's say, two premium, let's say, drivetrain unit providers. The, and they make the batteries. Uh, it's a little difference between Shimano and Bosch. Uh, Bosch is a closed system, what they call it. So everything from that system comes from one and the same supplier, namely Bosch. Whereas Shimano does open up their system, so the drivetrain unit and uh, the battery could come from different, let's say, sources. Um, just to answer the question about, let's say, the battery technology, we see that the battery technology, whether that's in cars or in bikes, really, uh, in, like the technology improves really rapidly. Uh, we can even see that today, if you look at, let's say, some of our bikes with the Arroyo, which is still like a uh, rear carrier kind of battery, whereas let's say our Citizen Speed is a um, an in-tube battery. So you see that let's say the batteries become smaller, uh, um, and let's say that the recharge like frequency uh, is improving as well. So just the lithium kind of battery uh, quality is becoming better and better. But it's just a matter of time. There was a, a big switch from old heavy nickel batteries to lithium ion about uh, eight, nine years ago. Um, and since that we've seen voltage increase, we've seen capacity increase, we've seen um, storage improvements where you can actually leave the batteries alone for a year or so and they don't go kaput. Um, but we're, we don't yet see the next big, like there isn't a, a quantum leap right around the corner. What we're seeing is uh, higher capacity, in smaller packaging so that we're going in tube and that sort of thing. Um, but as far as I have heard, there is no quantum leap right on the horizon. Um, we've got good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. so. Yeah. Do we need to wrap up? We got five minutes? We got five minutes. That's great. Your question. Hi. We're about, let's say, keeping things pretty equal to what it is what right now. Uh, we like if you look at let's say, like the model year changes, it's like incremental change instead of let's say radical kind of change because one of the reasons because I think the product is pretty good already. So maybe let's say the tires get a little wider. Like the, there's a, maybe some other suspension or something included, but no, it's uh, it's pretty like standard as it is. Yes, sir. So with electricity on board, as a platform, the electricity itself, a lot of things are going to do besides just powering the bike. Are there, are we moving in a direction where like turn signals are on bicycles and just other things that require electricity that now that you have it available, you can start to implement? Um, well, we see that in Europe right now that we have, for example, uh, brake lights on our bikes. So um, one of the things in Holland that is required on a, on a speed is that it uh, has a, a brake light. That whenever you brake, people can see from the back that you are braking. Um, that is one of the first steps towards, let's say, that it becomes like a motorcycle or something. Uh, no, I, I think maybe the motorcycle or like the moped as it is, like kind of moves away out of the market. And yeah, we do see a lot of, let's say, technology like GPS tracking and stuff. You know, that's coming up. We, with Gazelle, we just launched something in Holland with this uh, 
which is a traceable bike. So we give like a, a warranty on it that you uh, that you can't lose it. We just started doing that in Holland. You might be familiar with it. Gazelle is not the fastest in everything. We want to be very sure that it works before we kind of like launch it worldwide, because then uh, <laughs> you know you have all these bikes over here that we have to give that warranty on, and we, we're rather we're a process driven company. We're Dutch. So we want to make sure that you know that things work before we kind of start selling it. Um, um, so yeah, GPS tr uh, tracing it, uh, quantify me like you know how much do I do on this bike? How many calories do I burn? But whether you know maybe in the safety zone as well, you know maybe blinkers or smart kind of things to kind of improve safety. I think you can see more of that coming up. Yeah, you see the bikes becoming like a little bit bigger over time too. You know, the, the tire width is becoming bigger, the, they're becoming a little More clunkier, stable. stable, yeah. We're pushing hard for all that stuff. These guys, they're working on it. They're yeah, working we're working on, on it. Hard. Yeah. yeah, So, but it's also like good to understand that sometimes a company that is like sells like 300,000 bikes, uh, it's not like an agile kind of startup that you can, you know, tomorrow we do everything different. <laughs> We can't well, really I mean, do that. Yeah, there are real benefits in that too. Yep. Uh, you get Phoebe rides a, a gazelle. She That's knows. great. <laughs> join, join the family. <laughs> Last question. No, 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 yeah, you have classification to a certain respect as well. They're and then, much more strict, actually. Yeah, there's, we're quite strict. Actually, our bikes go 16 miles per hour, like to like the assist, like the normal, like class one that you know over here, which is a 20 miles per hour assist bike. Um, we don't have that in Europe. In Europe, it's like up to 16 miles. So, um, uh, so they're going a little slower, but then the distances are a little diff different as well. Um, so the bikes, as a standard, go a little faster over here. Uh, what we what we do over here as well is that we bring in bikes with a little bit of a more powerful engine, or motor, I should say, because uh, you guys have got more hills and those kind of things. Um, yeah, you see our, like classification in Europe as well. So our class one bikes are faster than their class one bikes. They don't have a class two because throttles, throttles are not allowed in Europe. And class three, they have something called type approval for every single part on every single uh, high-speed bike, which means that it's very, very slow innovation on high-speed bikes. You can't just put the seat post that you want on a high-speed bike and manufacture it. That all yeah. is not allowed. Yeah, In fact, you... bike shops can't even install a non-type approved bike seat on uh, a high-speed bike. So it's a very different thing. We've got, we don't feel like we have a lot of liberties here, but we have all sorts of awesome liberties. I actually have to wrap this up because our little window is coming to a close. We're going to do this again tomorrow. So percolate on your awesome questions. It's been great. Um, Ivan, thank you so much. He's going to be at the Gazelle stand, I think, yep. for the rest of the day. So um, if you have any one-on-one -on -one questions, please visit. And of course, test ride. And um, we're coming up on our family panel, which I'm pretty excited for. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.